Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'll talk about milk and their products. So if you haven't checked out my previous two videos regarding milk and their products, you may check them out. So let's get started for this. So this was the part I talked about in my previous video, which was about fermentation. And I talked about various other processing steps also. So starting with today's video with its products. So there are numerous milk products that we use in our day to day lives. So we'll talk about some of them. So milk and milk products are available to consumers and food manufacturers in different stable forms or several different forms. So the fluid form of milk can be categorized on the basis of fat content, which can be non fat, low fat, reduced fat and whole fat. So moving on with this, so some of the different types of milk that we are available in the market are cultured buttermilk. So this contains low fat or non fat milk containing S lactase, S lactase pardon, and L pulgaris that has been incubated to produce some lactic acid. Also, we have uh, another type of milk product, which is sweet acidophilus milk, which is which uh, in which sugar is added onto it. And it's a unfermented milk to which L acidophilus has been added. So there are different types of bacterium or microorganisms present in different types of milk products. So as you see in the cultured milk, there is presence of S lactic and L pulgar. In sweet acidophilus milk, we have L acidophilus. So one thing that remains common is that the lactobacillus species is definitely present in milk, but their uh, species are different. So we'll talk more of them. So another type of milk product is kafir. So kafir is a fermented milk that is about 3% that contains about 3% alcohol because of fermentation by lactobacillus kafir, which also adds CO2 in it. So kafir is generally available in markets as well. So it contains only just 3% alcohol and has and contains microorganisms such as lactobacillus kafir. Then we have products like lactate in which milk in which lactose content has been reduced by an enzyme known as lactase that splits lactose into glucose and galactose. So lactate is a very important product. So in this, the lactose content is reduced. So this is important for the ones who are lactose intolerant. So in this milk, the lactose content has been reduced with the help of the enzyme lactase. So lactase is definitely available in market for the ones who are lactose intolerant. And then we have yogurt as well. So yogurt is, a, yogurt is a very common milk product that is available in the market. So milk clotted by inoculating with S thermophils and L bulgarius and fermenting to pH 5.5. So these are some of the bacteria that is that are present and at a pH of 5.5. Soy milk is another milk product which is a beverage made from whole finely ground defatted soybeans and a beverage designed to compete with milk. So this is another that we have here so these are some of the pictures available for use this is the picture of a lactate which is uh, which can, which has the lactose content very much reduced with the help of lactase enzyme for the ones who are lactose intolerant and also lactase hydrolyzes lactose to galactose and glucose in these meal products so that what I, uh, that's what i talked about for the product of lactate and we have other free uh, milk products as you can see so there is a dairy product which has low lactose content we have other low fat milk products and more of them so here we have a table in front of you so this is a nutrient composition of selected yogurt and alternate milks so it contains food product different sort of food products their calorie their protein content their fat content carbs content and calcium content so you can check them out so moving on with this so next we have butter. So butter is a very common food product that we use in our day to day lives and it is used by almost every household. So butter technically is a dairy product and it's actually a water in oil emulsion containing about 15% water and the rest is fat. All right. So it's an emulsion sort of a thing. So it's water in oil emulsion and it's manufactured is accompanied or accomplished through churning to reverse the colloidal dispersion, transforming the water from the continuous to the dispersed phase by establishing tiny water droplets. So this manufactured process of butter takes place with the help of churning, so which transforms the water from the continuous to the dispersed phase by establishing tiny water droplets. 
So this was about butter. Next we talk about cream, so which is a very another very common uh, dairy product. So cream varies in fat content from 10.5%, which is half and half, and to 36%, which is a heavy whipping cream that is used in cakes. And they are produced by centrifugation of milk to separate a varying amount of lighter cream from the aqueous portion of the milk, depending on the type of cream desired. So cream is uh, very easy to extract with the help of centrifugation. So after centrifugation, we can extract different layers of cream that is extracted after the process. So depending on the fat content, we generally segregate them. So moving on with this. So next we have is cheese. So again, a very common product. So cheese production requires the formation of curd. So without the formation of curd, cheese cannot be manufactured or produced. So and uh, so it definitely involves the formation of curd and removable of a uh, removal of considerable amount of whey or water. So as I told in my first video, you may check the first video out of milk and dairy products. So in which I talked about the separation of different types of proteins that are present in milk. So that, uh, so there are two types of protein that are that is uh, mainly present in milk. One is casein and the second is whey. So I talked about the method how to separate the two different types of proteins. So it is generally done with the help of adding certain citric acid so that the milk, uh, the isoelectric point of the milk gets shifted. And when we pour some citric acid or any sort of uh, substance or acidic substance onto milk, the milk segregates and the solid matter gets separated from the liquid matter. So the liquid matter is whey, the solid matter, which is casein. So, so the same is the process of cheese. So the cheese process takes place with the formation of curd. So formation of curd is the solid part with the removable of watery substance that is present after segregation. So we need to remove the watery part but that is whey and with the help of that solid part or curd we move on to produce the cheese. So clotting is facilitated with the addition of various bacterial cultures such as Lactococcus lactis and Streptococcus primordis to generate lactic acid. So these are various methods with the help of you which you can produce cheese. So remember just one thing, so cheese cannot be produced directly. So if, uh, for production of cheese, curd needs to be produced uh, with the removal of whey, or with the removal of liquid part that is whey. So, this. so also acid that is, uh, so acid causes calcium phos phosphocasinate in the casein missiles to eliminate cal calcium. So acid that is present in the milk, which helps to segregate the two types of milk, helps to eliminate the calcium content in the milk and thus we get the curd or the solid part or casein. So this is another as you can see that this is a picture of the curd formation that helps that that is basically the first and the foremost step for making cheese. So this the things gets continued. Mm -hmm. So now we'll talk about some different classification of cheese. So there are many number of uh, are many types of cheese available in the market depending on the fat content and all of that. So we'll talk about some of the types of cheese. So one of the natural, uh, one of the most common cheese that is available in the market, which is the natural cheese. So any cheese made by clotting milk to form curd and concentrating the curd by draining the whey. So this is the natural cheese. So, uh, so natural cheese is very simple as talked about just right now. So it's just the formation of curd and draining away the liquid matter, which is whey. So that is how we can extract natural cheese. Also variations are produced by varying the curd concentrations and by ripening with or without the addition of selected microorganisms and other ingredients. Ingredients, pardon. So the formation of natural cheese can be uh, increased or can be uh, customized with the help of certain microorganisms and we can uh, try it out, uh, trying, it, trying it with different microorganisms to check how the cheese uh, comes out. So moving on with this uh, type of cheese that we have. So this is another step as you can see the following curd formation. So the next step in making cheese is cutting the curd in preparation for draining away the whey. So we need to just drain away the whey. So this is the step for draining away the whey after curd has been formed. So this is an industrial process, uh, how it's done for making large amount of cheese or bulk amount of cheese. 
at one. So this is all unique aspects of selected natural cheese. So we have different varieties of cheese, as you can see. There are different names of cheese depending on the milk uh, or depending on the fat content and all of the approximate moisture and aging and microorganisms add. So you may just pause the video and just take a look on it. So moving on with this, we have another type of cheese, which is Stilton cheese, which is a blue veined cheese made by an approved process in any of the six creameries in Lanchester, Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire and England. So this is the type of cheese that is not uh, that is mainly available in the Middle East or in uh, northern parts such as the UK. So this is a Stilton cheese or a blue grain cheese that is available in UK. So moving on, this another type of thing that we have uh, is the legal des uh, designation or the product designation of origin. So legal designation that the European Union can grant food products from specific locations. So this is just applicable to the European Union or the products from Europe. Also composition of various specialized cheese items. So there are different types of cheese items as you can, as you can see. So this is one is processed cheese. Then we have processed cheese food. And the last we have the processed cheese spread. So these are three different types of cheese items that are available. So this is an important thing to understand. So as we talked about, there are three different types of pasteurized processed cheese. So they have different uh, percentage of water as well as fat content. So the processed cheese has a, has, has a, fat, has a water content about 43% and has the maximum fat content. So processed cheese is has, having the maximum fat content. Then we have processed cheese food, which has a lower fat content. And then we have processed cheese spread, which has the least amount of fat content. So depending on the fat content, the cheese, uh, people choose cheese wisely. So let's just keep this video till here. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give this video a big thumbs up. And thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video very soon.